Um, well, so my research was looking at um, macroinvertebrates and using them as bioindicators to see stream health in um, the Cache River. And I chose this topic not because I like bugs, because that's the complete opposite, but I saw that this was something that if I furthered my knowledge on, I was going to be able to take it to my classroom and to my students and be able to bring it down to their level because I knew it so well. And I know a lot about bugs now. Um, why do we care? Who cares about the water? We're not drinking out of the Cache River. You know, so what does it matter? Um, but it's essential to life and you know, we, we bring up all those points. Um, when water quality degrades, everything's affected. The plants around it, uh, the macroinvertebrates, the fish community, which then go to different areas where we do get fish out of and then eat, um, and it can affect the entire food chain. Um, just human health, drinking water, even though it's not out of the cash, you know, we do care about water quality. Um, fisheries, industry, and agriculture, just aesthetic reasons. You go to the ecotourism, you want it to look pretty. You don't want, you know, an ugly, gross stream, which you'll see, um, and you want it to be pleasing for people so they come and want to see their um, species habitat and then recreation. Um, so macroinvertebrates are commonly used as a bioindicator. I didn't come up with this one on my own. Um, and the presence or absence of specific ones um, can be used to give you an overall view of the health of that stream. Um, generally, unpolluted, very healthy streams will have greater diversity and will contain um, macros that can't handle pollution. Whereas in those polluted streams, you're going to see the ones that they can handle it. So they're very abundant there. Um, why are they very good? Because they spend up to a year of their life in the stream itself. Um, they have very little mobility, so they're not moving around a bunch. Um, generally abundant in some cases. Um, primary food source for many fish, good indicators of local condition, and good diversity equals a healthy stream, and they are, at times, very easy to sample. Okay, so my question was, um, and I, I didn't go into the upper verse lower, because I wanted to, once again, bring it to something that I can take to Murfreesboro and use in that area, and would have a little bit meet, more meaning to the kids. Um, but I looked at um, two streams, um, one that is impacted by agricultural uh, practices, and then one that serves as a pristine site and more of my control where it's not going to be affected by um, agricultural um, presence near it. Um, and my objective is to determine if the local activities near and upstream of my test locations influence the macroinvertebrate community. Um, so my hypothesis is that the stream health will be negatively impacted by the different agricultural factors affecting Cypress Creek, which is my bad stream, compared to my unimpacted Big Creek. Okay. Um, so rapid bioassessment protocol is um, standard issued by the EPA, so we used that. Um, we used site selection, which was the help of my lovely mentor here in Jackson who has done this. Um, site assessment, we looked through, we said, um, we looked at the creek itself, the stream itself, was it riffle, run, or pool? How much water was there? What kind of substrate was there? What, what else was around? What kind of things could we note about this specific area that would help us? Um, and then we see about a 100 meter reach. So I stood and held the end of it, and she walked 100 meters with the, <laughs> with the question, and I said, you almost there yet? <laughs> and then she came back. Um, so then we went um, and we did 20 jabs in um, riffle run in pool areas, and that was part of the assessment. We said, okay, about 80% of this is run, 10% is riffle, 10% is pool. So we um, use that to determine where our jabs would be throughout that 100 meters. So it wasn't every 10 meters or anything like that. It was kind of proportionate to what that stream was representing. Um, then we preserved and identified these organisms to the family level 
and there's a tolerance score for each family that has been set, um, and it was, it's very standard used for this. So we calculated that the Hillenhoff Biotic Index, the Shannon Diversity, we looked at richness, EPT taxa, and percent dominance, and I'll show you all that. Okay, so here are my testing sites. So here we have um, Big Creek, which is the one that we all went to, and then we have Cypress Creek right down there, which I will never go back to. <laughs> so, um, so here's the Good Creek, nice, we had no problems there, and Cypress Creek, and it had cover, and there wasn't much flow, and you can just look at it and say, like, I wanted to just call it quick and say, clearly the stream is worse, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> Karen was just like Doug, respecting the science. <laughs> Um, so, first thing I looked at was EPT, um, and I'm not even going to attempt to try to say those. Um, these are three groups that have been recognized as containing some of the most sensitive indicators. So, um, a, you, out of your sample size, you count the species that belong to these groups, um, and then you can just calculate a percent. And what I found with Big Creek, we had four that went from this um, out of my 103. So that gave me a fair um, rating. And then Cypress Creek, there were two out of only 85, um, which also fell into the fair range. However, Big Creek did have twice as many. So you can look at that statistic too. It had twice as many in this category. Um, spe species richness is basically how many different species did we find. And in both creeks, it was the same. We found nine different species in each one. Um, so that doesn't tell you too much, um, but it is used for something else. And then you also look at percent dominance. Um, so which one had the most? And what percentage of my total sample was that? So in Big Creek, um, I had 49% was the most prominent one. And Cypress Creek was 76.5, which is much larger. So right there kind of shows you just a little bit less diverse. So then this, the Shannon Diversity Index takes into account both those things. So it takes into account how many there were and then the percent dominance of the most one. Um, and so that came up to, um, for Big Creek, we have about 1.3 and then Cypress Creek is 0.8. So that showed significantly higher there for the Big Creek, which is what I was hoping to see. Um, and then the Hilson Hoff Biotic Index. Um, and this was the main one, and this is probably, I'd say the easiest one and the one I've used most often with my students in the class. And you have to identify the bugs, and they each have a tolerance level. Um, and then you just basically calculate. And I love how you look at that, and I know my kids would freak out, but there's nothing special about that. You know, so all you're taking is the sum of each bug, how many there are, times its tolerance value, divided by how many there were. Um, so I have the example which we already saw, so we'll just use mine. Um, and then you get that number, and then there's where it falls into. Okay, so. Here were all, this was, um, so this is Big Creek. Um, so all the different tags that we found, their functional feeding group, number of organisms in each one, and we were, um, and we all know, uh, you wanna get at least 100 bugs in each sample. And this sample was the good, pristine sample, and it took us 14 minutes to go through the sample and get all the bugs, that was great. It was actually like Christmas, because this was the second one we did. So went through and calculated everything, and we got um, an HBI of 5.96, which falls into the fair range, which is you know kind of consistent with the other data I found. Clearly, I'd hoped it had been a little bit different. Um, so then for Cypress Creek, we um, went through the same thing. We only got 85 organisms, and I'm pretty sure we found every single one out of that sample. It was a much larger sample because the site was very dirty and there was a lot of organic material mixed in there. <laughs> Search for four and a half hours for those 85 bugs, whereas the other one we got 103 and 14. 
Um, I never thought you could be sore from using tweezers. But you put my hand, my back and my hand hurt the next day. I never thought it could hurt. Um, so right there, just the sheer fact that we couldn't even get the hundred, I think says a lot about that sample. But you know, there um, could have been however, other factors there. Came out with a six, which still falls into that same fair range and not too much different from that 5.96. <laughs> Just kind of comparing. So here you can see um, Big Creek did have the higher EPT, did have more diversity, and then it did have the lower biotic index, which is what you want. So you did see it, and you, you did see kind of what went with my hypothesis. I just didn't feel it was quite enough. Um, so my conclusion, further testing would be needed due to the small sample size in the one. Um, in order to come up with a conclusion regarding my hypothesis. Basically, don't want to admit I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm not wrong, I'm not right yet either, but definitely more sampling would have to take place for me to feel comfortable concluding anything from this data. However, you do kind of see that it has a possibility. Um, Future studies, you definitely would want to look at the time of the year. Um, I was concerned we wouldn't find a lot because they've already emerged. Um, um, you could identify past the family level. Uh, that takes a lot of knowledge and a lot of time. Um, Karen knows how to do that, you know, and that's what she does in her studies. But I felt that, kind of didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. but the family level is what I would do with the kids. So I kind of wanted to stick to that. And I definitely would want to get larger samples. Um, I was told this, what, what she was doing, Karen was doing in her research, she would, out of every single sample, collect every single bug. So she didn't stop at the hundred once she got that. So that was interesting too. So there, there's so many different levels you can take this two that would give you different results, but I kind of wanted to keep it real to what I feel I'm capable of doing with the kids, because that's basically what this boils down to, you know, how are we going to be able to take this and help them, so um, Karen Jackson, she was wonderful, she won walking through the muck way more than me, so that's it.